Here we go. What's up, San Antonio? What's up, South Texas? For the first time ever, the Alamo City Sportscast is on the road right now. As you can see, I'm at a bar, right? So I'm at a bar. You see all the beer on tap right there, right? But I'm not just at any bar. I'm at the new Whataburger in Las Vegas, Nevada, here for March Madness. The games get going in less than two hours. Pretty exciting. I was just walking down the Vegas Strip. I was going to do this at a casino. And as I was walking to the casino, I saw the Whataburger and I thought to myself, I got to check this place out. Talked to the management and they said, you want to do a walk and talk? You want to show this place off? Go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it. Joe, this place is impressive, man. It, it is, is impressive. Man. $14 for a meal, which by the way, I mean, that's, you know, four or five bucks more than it is in San Antonio. Uh, but if you take a look over here, upstairs, they have an upstairs viewing area to watch all the games. I mean, it looks like a sports book in here. It is badass, but we are live from Las Vegas. Again, March Madness gets going today. The first game is going to be Mississippi State taking on Michigan State. Tom Izzo, an 8-9 matchup there. Uh, I put some money on there, and Chris Gonzalez already on the chat asking the question, how much money has Jimenez lost already? And the answer is a fortune. My God, <laughs> I got boned yesterday. I met the blackjack dealer from hell the pie gal table from hell. Uh, but I was good about it because I talked about the envelopes, right? When I get to the end of the envelope, I'm done for the day. And the fact of the matter is that I got to the end of the envelope almost. Uh, technically, I'm still on the first one because I have some sports bets that haven't uh, been decided yet. So technically, I'm still alive with the first envelope. Uh, but I felt brutal, man. I was brutalized yesterday, Joe. I don't know if you've ever had that run there where nothing good is going on blackjack roulette pie gal none of it was working i, I was almost going to go over the slot machine uh but uh i chickened out at the last minute i was like nope nope this is not my day i'll start again tomorrow uh but it's 10 15 there in san antonio eight in the morning over here um but i'm having fun out here got my bets in joe i gotta be honest with you man some of my friends are a little a little over their heads right now when it comes to their sports betting man i'm over here betting on who's gonna win betting on the upsets dude they're betting over here some of my friends and all these people over here are betting on who's gonna be the first team to score five points who's gonna be winning at the end of the first quarter you yeah. know the points and assists for some obscure point guard out of some school that we've never even heard of before i mean they get really into it and there was a line at planet hollywood sportsbook before they opened up the sports book. There was a huge line of people trying to get in their bets. They have these kiosks that are very similar to that at uh, Rapama Park back in the day, where if you know how to handle the machine, you can place your own bet. Uh, but it's been brutal. And then I was at the Mirage and they had a system failure last night. So no one was able to get a bet in at the Mirage last night. So it's a big old cluster F over here, uh, but we're excited for the first games to get going. UT plays later on this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, they are a slight favorite uh, against Colorado State, I believe. I'm not a big believer in Texas this year. I actually bet the Colorado State would win this game. Uh, you know, betting the upsets, Joe. But this is a very cool place, dude. Uh, I, I'm glad they gave us permission here to do a segment here at the uh, Whataburger on the Las Vegas Strip, which, by the way, is kind of kind of close to New York, New York. Kind of like where New York, New York and Aria kind of come together. But uh, Joe, how are things in San Antonio? Doing good, man. Uh, I woke up this morning. Everything is kind of soggy. It's raining. I was looking at the weather forecast because I'm supposed to go hang out, go camping with my boy, Jonas Clark, man. And yeah, I don't know, man. I think I'm going to have to go ahead and call ahead and check out what the conditions are like over in Luling, man, because it looks like there's going to be some bad weather and it looks like the campsites might be all washed I'll out. Say, Hey, check this out, dude. I, I did not notice this. I'm at the back of the Whataburger trying to see, like, what is this casino that's right next to it or hotel? It's the five-star Waldorf Astoria. Nice. So Whataburger is right next to the Waldorf Astoria. You walk out. I mean, that's the valet for the Waldorf. You walk out, you're here. I can see the Aria right there. New York, New York to my right. To my left, you have Aria. Very nice, man. Very nice. I'm very impressed by it uh all of this but uh man last night though man 
the tables weren't open and no one was feeling it yesterday. I didn't see one person here in Vegas Man. that was actually winning any money. It was brutal yesterday. Nice, man. Well, at least you didn't win, lose too much money. You know, you you lost, but you didn't lose because you, you didn't use all your envelope, right? Right. I still had about 200 bucks left in my envelope. Plus, I had some bets still in there for basketball games. So if you were to say gambling-wise, he meant how much did you lose? I'd say six bills, dude. I'd say oh. it's six bills is what I is what I. Want. Oh, no, I think we lost you, Mike. Looks like we lost Mike. But as a consolation prize, we will bring in Jeff Garcia here shortly. So I'm going to go ahead and start making the call here in a little bit. We'll bring in Jeff Garcia. He'll be able to talk a little bit about San Antonio Spurs basketball. And we'll also go ahead and talk about X-Men 97 and probably even talk about the new Alien trailer that came out, Romulus. So that's going to be pretty cool. Talk a little bit of pop culture entertainment uh, with Jeff Garcia. But how is everyone doing this morning, man? I mean, it's a soggy morning, like I said, just uh, trying to bide my time here. Today is actually going to be a, a shorter show because uh, I got things to do, places to go. And if I'm not going to wind up going camping with my boy jonas because of the weather conditions we might just go to a freaking bar hooters or something nearby and just watch the games and just get all trash bro i'm off today so i don't give a damn there you go what's going on brother hey what's up man yeah i lost you for a second i think it's just you know nature of the beast when it comes to you and uh, and walking, you know. Well, well, it's it's the uh, the link that you sent me. If someone uh, tries to call me, uh, it kicks me out. And I have my cell phone. Do not disturb. But uh, don't know what it is. But anyway, take a look at today's games, man. I mean, I'm excited for March Madness. Uh, I know the women's tournament's getting going as well. Yeah. Uh, but there's all certain things that you can you can uh, you can bet on over here, dude. Uh, have you filled out a bracket this year? I have not filled out a bracket because I've been too busy working. Work has been insane lately, dude. Oh, dude, I know what you're talking about here, man. But uh, we have uh, fresh blood coming in. I got like five other friends who are coming in today uh, at various times of the day and night. So uh, hopefully it's a more party atmosphere. Yesterday over here in Vegas, dude, it was like 90% dude, man. It was a big old sausage fest here in Las Vegas. <laughs> you know, the, the, the ladies don't come to Vegas unless it's a Friday night or a Saturday night. Uh, but it was funny because I was sitting at a table yesterday playing blackjack, and this guy was looking around, going, "The only women that are here are the waitresses." <laughs> oh God! Man. Yeah, man, you gotta you gotta invite some women next time, dude. Oh, I know, man. You know, at least liven it up a little bit. Uh, yeah, a little but, bit. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about it all. You have Jeff Garcia on today. We all what are y'all talking yeah. about today? Oh, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about San Antonio Spurs basketball. Talk about X Men '97, which uh, we we liked because we used to watch the animated series way back in the day. So it's a yeah. bit of nostalgia for us, and probably talk a little bit about the Alien trailer that just dropped yesterday called Romulus. So we'll see. Oh, is there a new Alien movie? Yeah, there's a new one that's going to be dropping out here, and they just released the first little teaser trailer. Looks interesting. Awesome, brother. Awesome. Well, I'll let you go, man. So you can do the rest of the show. But uh, wish me luck the rest of the day. And uh, we're live from Whataburger, baby. Whataburger, Las Vegas. Yeah, man. Man, have a good one, dude. Don't um, don't lose too much. Try to come back with at least uh, either you breaking even or a little bit of money in the in the bank. You know, a, a little bit. But you, you know, I I took what I was willing to lose, but still, it's it's still painful either way. But uh, right, brother. I'll let you go, brother. All right, man. Thanks, man. Talk to you later. Yeah. All right, well, thanks from, to Mikey Menace for joining us for a quick segment over in Las Vegas. So we're going to go ahead and pause real quick to go ahead and uh, give a shout-out to our boy, Jeff Garcia. And when I come back, hopefully Jeff will be joining us. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. 
So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on Threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked on Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked on Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. All right. Well, I try to get Jeff back in, but he was busy right now. So we'll try him back in a little bit. Man, my hair's a hot mess today, dude. Damn. <laughs> I need to go get me a haircut. Oh, anyway, man, it's good to, to see everybody in the chat today. You know, our usuals, you know, shout out to you, Chris Gonzalez and Sith. You know, thank you all for watching. Uh, we'll try to go ahead and get Jeff back on here in a little bit. Like I said, this is going to be kind of a short show today because I got things I got to do today. I'm off. I'm going to go and have some fun. Either we're going to go out and fish, maybe do a little camping. If not, like I said, we'll go and consolation prizes taking in the the games today maybe at a local bar hooters or twin peaks or something but we're gonna have some fun today nonetheless man i'm just wondering what these weather conditions are going to be like for the rest of the day that's going to really be the telltale sign of what i'm going to wind up doing man but what's popping off here on twitter man i haven't been on the x for a little bit because i've been a, a little busy working but let's go ahead and see what's happening man I know that we had some fights uh, that were going to be announced. I saw something about Canelo uh, making an announcement here. He's going to go ahead and wind up fighting. Uh, I forgot what the fighter was. I think it's going to be on the May the 4th, from what I understood. I just saw that just a little while ago. There it is. Yeah, Canelo's going to be fighting on May the 4th. You know, he's always going to fight either the 4th or the 5th. Cinco de Mayo, man. Happens every single year. Yeah, and tomorrow we're not going to be talking uh, boxing. Uh, my boy, Spernandez had to let him know, man, we're not having a show tomorrow. It's going to be a short week only because I'm going to be taking off tomorrow. I'm going to be off. This is kind of like my birthday weekend, kind of, sort of speak. So tomorrow I'm going to take off. There's going to be no show because Mike is over in Vegas, man. <laughs> yeah, Mike Mike was on the show earlier, man. To start off the to start the start off the show, Mike was doing a live segment with us for a little bit from the Waterburger, man. I got to say that Waterburger was nice over in Vegas. Uh Mike might actually he said he might try to pop on maybe tomorrow and you know, do a real fast show, walk and talk kind of thing. Uh talk with you guys, let you all see what's happening over in Vegas. I know I'm not going to be in the studio. I'm going to be out and about. I'm going to be taking the day off for tomorrow. Getting ready for my party that I'm going to be hosting on Saturday. And, yeah, I already sent the invites out to everybody. So, if you know, you know. We're going to just have a little bit of fun here. Hang, kick back. Hang out at the house. Have a little barbecue. Have a DJ. There will be no video footage of what happens next, hopefully. Because if not, some people will be getting in trouble. <laughs> Looking at you, Chris Leha. Chris Leha will be here on Saturday. We're going to be acting a fool. I, I can tell you that right now. I'll try and reach out to, to Jeff again to see if he's going to, we can come back on. So just bear with me real quick, man. I'm just going to go ahead and reach out to him, see if he's ready to go. And then I'll try calling him and getting him on. So we can go ahead and talk a little bit about San Antonio Spurs basketball. And again, we're going to talk a little bit about X-Men 97, which I know a lot of people have seen. If you're a fan of the show, the animated series from back in the day, Watching the X-Men 97 was a little bit of nostalgia, man. It was, I liked it. I enjoyed it. So we're going to see what, what Jeff Garcia thought of the show. I'm going to go ahead and try bringing him back on. So I'm going to go ahead and give a quick shout out to our boy over here, Chris Leha from MCS General Contracting. MCS General Contracting, more than 30 years of combined experience in concrete placement. They are the best in the business, honest pricing, high quality work, they get going on house foundations, driveways, concrete patio decks. If you want to extend the deck, extend the driveway. If you're a business and you need to put together a slab, a parking lot, or other concrete placement services or sidewalks, reach out to MCS General Contracting at 210-774-9155. They're confident in their skills, so give Chris Leha over at MCS General Contracting a call at 210-774-9155. And thank you for being a sponsor of this show. Yeah, so shout out to you, Chris Leon, over over at MCS General Contracting. 
We appreciate you, man. If you want to go ahead and get it done right, you're going to go ahead and call, call Chris Leha. Got the hardest concrete in the business, diamond hard, as he likes to say. So let's go ahead and see what's going on here in the chat right now. We got Chris Gonzalez. Reminder that UTSA women play tonight in the opening round of the NIT. Yeah, that is true. I did see that, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I get to watch them. I'm not too trash by the time they, they come out and start playing. I know I'll be watching. I know y'all are watching the NCAA uh, tournament right now, the March Madness. Some of y'all's brackets have been busted. It usually happens, you know. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and take a look at what happened yesterday. We had Grambling State. That was kind of an upset there over Montana State. 88 to 81 was the final. You had Colorado and Boise State. 60 to 53 was the final on that. So you got some teams moving on and. It's going to be another day of exciting games today, man. I'm looking forward to that. I don't know if you all have joined up with any of the, the brackets, any of that stuff that's been going on. I know a lot of people like to join up for the brackets for fun. So I don't know if you all bet for money, make any money off of the off of the brackets or not, but that's always fun too. I know Rudy Campos and I think Kim Gonzalez too, they had a bracket going on. So if you're looking to join brackets, just go ahead and pop on the X and check them out because I know they've been posting that they've uh, they had their brackets out in case you want to go ahead and join them. So I'm going to reach out to Jeff right now and see if he is available. So hang on, guys. Let's see if we can get him on. You can hear the phone ringing. The phone is a ringing. All right, I'll just go ahead and play his, his segment real quick and see if I can get him on. Locked on Spurs is your daily Spurs podcast hosted by Jeff Garcia, the lead Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Jeff has a healthy plethora of guests all the time on the Locked on Spurs podcast. You can also follow Jeff on threads at Jeff G Ken's 5 SA. You can also follow Jeff on Twitter at Jeff G Spurs Zone. So make sure you go ahead and give Jeff a follow not only on threads and Twitter, but also on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash at Locked on Spurs. This is where you're going to be able to find the replay of the Locked on Spurs podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Yeah, I still can't get a hold of Jeff, so we'll see if he's going to be coming on or not. But we got some other people in the chat here. <laughs> Ryan Santiani says, got to get that opinion about Ohanti and his interpreter yeah i saw that man they went ahead and fired the interpreter because apparently ahanti from the dodgers his interpreter was swindling money so they went ahead and let him go hold on guys i got jeff calling all right so here we go we got the one and only jeff garcia joining us now jeff can you hear me I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, I got you, man. So, unfortunately, man, I wasn't able to get the good graphic for you because I'm doing everything remotely because I had to bring him in his on. Mm -hmm. So, we're going to have to go with the tried and true graphic, bro. <laughs> What's that one? Oh, yeah, the old one. The old one. <laughs> yeah. So, we have people watching here. Uh, we got a lot of uh, our, our viewers, you know, our, our normals. We got Chris Gonzalez, Sith Elias. Dio, we also got Ryan Santian and Gert Vanderkrift. He's joining us all the way from the Netherlands, man. So, oh, that's cool. Yeah, man. Shout out that's to you. Cool. Yeah, dude. So, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about San Antonio Spurs basketball, man. You got anything for us? Anything you're working on? Well, uh, yesterday I released a one on one interview I did with uh, Blake Wesley. And, uh, you know, he's been playing very well towards the end of the season. You know, been that spark book off the bench. And I asked him, well, what do you attribute this to this? He said that it was his Austin Spurs coach, Will Voigt, that got him to where he is. So it's a great conversation I had with uh, Blake Wesley. It's up there at kensfire.com slash Spurs right now. Uh, also, Mike Jimenez, he joined Lockdown Spurs yesterday. Uh, it's it, it, The topic was pretty interesting, uh, Joe. What we talked about was would it be considered a major, significant, like just a really explosive snub if Wemby doesn't get the uh, DPOI. We agreed it kind of is because yeah. the numbers show it, Joe. Yeah, you there with me, Jeff? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, man. You're good. 
Yeah, you missed Mike earlier too, man. Mike, he was uh, going live from the Waterburger over in the Vegas Strip, dude. Mm -hmm. He said it was nice. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Vegas plenty of times, but I haven't been to the one with the, with a Waterburger in it. Yeah, it was it was nice. He was showing us the Waterburger. He was uh, showing us around, doing a walk and talk real quick to start the show out the gate. It looked cool, man. He already lost a lot of money though, almost a G, mm -hmm. a whole grand. That's what Vegas does to you. I know, man. Uh, he said that. The uh, blackjack was not uh, not his friend yesterday. <laughs> you, gotta, you just got to know when to stop. That's well, it. Yeah, he knew when to stop. He's just like, man, he wasn't feeling it. He said, I think he said he went and played a little roulette and won a little bit of money back, but he was still a minus, you know, overall. So he didn't use his whole envelope. He still had, I think he said, 200 bucks <laughs> in the first envelope, Jeff. <laughs> do you do you blow a lot of money when you go to Vegas? Oh, no. Hell no, dude. I don't get that kind of money to blow on on gambling like that dude I, i'll go and gamble a little bit and if i'm not winning i call it a night dude yeah i gotta hit the streak you know if i'm hitting the streak i'll stay with that streak and it gets hot dude my family has a history uh we've been we're gamblers bro my uncle oh, yeah? my uncle owns the record for the for the craps tables i believe it's in um one of the cachata i think it's in the cachata casino over in uh mm -hmm. in was it uh louisiana yeah. So what he's done is he went and he was sh shooting craps for like 20 something hours, 27, 28 hours straight, dude. <laughs> wow. And he was hitting wow. big time, man. So, yeah, dude, we're gamblers, brother. And I like I like the crab stables, man. The crab stables have always been good to me. Roulette is always good to me. Blackjack, however, it's hit or miss, mm -hmm. man. But yeah, dude, some of the other table games I fare better on, you know, so I, I like gambling, dude. What about you? Are you a gambler? No, I'm not really that much of a gambler. I think. One of the few times I've been to Vegas, uh, there was one night, I think I was at the Tropicana Hotel, and I was hitting it big on the roulette table, and uh, I, sh I should have known to leave. Like, I was up, like, triple what I started with, and within seconds, it was gone. 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 <laughs> I was like, you gotta be kidding me. Jeez, dude. Yeah, so you were talking to me about the Spurs, man, and, you know, you got some stories coming out, so the... Peeps can go and check those out because I'm sure you have them over on Ken's Five, you know, the website there. Yeah, and I just put put an article up right now. Kel and for those who don't know, Kelton Johnson actually does have a sneaker deal uh, and a signature sneaker line, but with a Chinese company. It's called, I can't pronounce it. I think it's called Kia Don. And they have commercials of Kelton. They, uh, have, he's their ambassador. Well, just recently, they just shared the news that they had put out a new sneaker, a signature sneaker for Kelden, uh, and it's Fiesta theme inspired. They're really nice. But if you dig deeper, uh, recently they also posted a new release of a sneaker. Apparently, he's into motorsports. I had no idea, like racing. I had no idea. So they made one in an honor of his one of his favorite pastimes, called you know, the motorsport, and it's all blue. It's red and white. And it, but the best one, I think, is in my opinion, is the Fiesta one. That one is just sick. Go check it out right now. It's on my Twitter right now at Jeff G Spurs Zone. It's pretty awesome, Joe. I mean, maybe nice. you can pull it up, pull it up for everybody to see right now, Joe. Yeah, let me go ahead and check and see if I can go ahead and do that for you. Yeah. You on the Kids yeah, 5 it, website? It, it, no, no, no. I'll just go to my handle. Okay. I'll go ahead and check that out real quick here. Yeah, you, you're going to love it. You're, you're going to love it when you see it, the way they designed it and everything. They have this like. Nice. They kind of have this uh, new tech, I guess. It's like it's like lace, but with a strap over it. You'll see it. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Well, let me go ahead and see if I can pull that up here. Oh, yeah, dude. That looks sick, dude. I like that. Let's see if we yeah. can show that to everybody, man. That's nice. I'm gonna yeah. See, I'm going to share the screen right now. There you are. Jeff G. Yeah, look, look at that, man. Just look at that. Let me go ahead and shorten the screen up. There you go. Every I have this ultra wide screen, dude, and every time I have it full screen, everything comes out stretched out. You know, it's mm -hmm. annoying, man. Because I can have like side by sides and all that stuff on the screen, but I hate that, dude. One of the little mm -hmm. quirks that I don't like about having those ultra wide screens. But these are nice, dude. This is uh, yeah. Kelvin Johnson's new kicks, man. I like the logo too. It has that little Spurs uh, Fiesta color vibe going, man. These are clean. Yeah. Think about it. Trying to get a pair of these are, is tough. Like, I think yeah. they only sell in China. Like, you have to go through, like, a third party. Hey, dude. Go through customs. Like, <laughs> yeah, go through customs and all that stuff. 
Uh, he actually had a recently announced, well, not him, but the company announced that they have a new clothing line uh, for Keldon. And apparently uh, his alternate logo, aside from the uh, initials, the KJ, is a teddy bear. Go figure. Really? It's a little teddy bear. Yeah, that's in his alternate uh, logo. And he's actually worn some of the clothes uh, uh, during press conferences. And one time I asked him, and he kind of clammed up a bit. I asked him, like, hey, what's that you're wearing right now? And he goes, oh, this is my clothing line. And then like, he moved on right to the next question. Yeah, he wasn't so, supposed to talk about it. Probably not. But I mean, I definitely want to talk about him because, hey, you know, I mean, these are cool. I mean, I would definitely get a pair of sneaks like this. Yeah. Depends on how much they, they cost, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think you can get them, but it's just the customs and the shipping. And it'll just get you. They'll probably come over here eventually, but it's going to take a while. I think it's some, some, some small parts of the country they have. I don't know. New York has them uh, in certain stores, but like, they're just expensive because of how much it takes to bring them over. Oh, I bet. Hey, you know what? Speaking of that, man, you know, things coming overseas, you know, we have our good friend, Taro Katani, the number one Spurs fan from Japan. He's going to be coming back in town on Friday. So, We'll see if we can go ahead and get him here in, in studio. If I have him in here in studio, I'm going to see if I can get you on the show at the same time. That way we can mm -hmm. all talk because we're all friends. You know, Taro, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. It's been a long time, though, since I've seen him, though. Yeah, exactly, man. It'd be nice to catch up with him, with him you know, and you put you and him together again. Because I remember we had an episode where we were in studio with the great Chris Duell when he was mm -hmm. having, when he had the Chris Duell show. So it was me, you, and Taro Katani in the studio at the same time talking spurs that was a good time man we still have the picture of, of all of us together in the yeah, studio remember, yeah yeah that was pretty cool yeah man. but uh we're gonna have a new uh lockdown spurs episode coming out uh, later today it's with my colleague at uh kids five uh Casey Vieira. yeah how's he uh, doing by the way he's doing good he's doing good still holding it down on the on the, the weekend for kens and uh you know he's a new dad so yeah he's, dad he's life enjoying. <laughs> well, he used to do all video with me. Now he does yeah. audio only. He wants nobody to see inside his house. This is just <laughs> I so bet. we did we did an audio show, but we did release a video that he and I did at Ken's Five. So it's in today's uh, lockdown spur. Should come out like in the afternoon. Oh, nice, so, dude. Yeah. yeah. And then the, tomorrow's episode is a fan episode. We're gonna have two fans come on. Really nice. And discuss what the fan base is talking about. Well. One of them is going to discuss what the fan base is talking about. The other one is going to talk about his encounter, quote unquote, during a game versus Draymond Green and them two going at it and beefing with each other. No, yeah. a tall tale. I, I, I detect a tall tale coming. No, it's not he meant it. There's actually video proof. <laughs> There's actually video proof of these two guys. Okay, well, then I'll, it. I'll believe it. Yeah, so he, he came on. But other than that, no, it's, it's been bad winding down the season already, you know, just looking forward to the offseason. Kind of wishing it was here already because what more can you talk about? The season's over, Joe. It is, right? Yeah. So we're going to get into some some talk right here because Chris Gonzalez is asking us to get into it because I already teased this, Jeff. He says, Joe, let's get into the real talk. X-Men 97 and Rogues mm. is for the streets. <laughs> ah, my boy. Yeah, she, she, she did Gambit dirty, Joe. Did you see it already? Yeah, I already saw it, man. But you, what did you think, man? She, she did him dirty? I saw, man. That's like, damn. But, you know, they said that you can watch the first two episodes, right, on Disney+. Plus. Mm -hmm. I could have sworn there were, like, three episodes, bro. No, nah, that's only two. But what do, you, what do you think about what, what uh, she did to Rogue? I mean, to Gambit, man. That was dirty. Oh, man. I mean, this is, a, this is the cool thing about this X-Men is that they're not afraid to take some risk, man. You know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's what yeah. I, I liked about it. You know, I, I enjoyed the story. And not only that, but I also like the artwork, man. Like the animation and everything, mm -hmm. spot on from the original X Men series. Even the intro, Jeff. I'm like, damn. Yeah, there's some changes to it because to adjust for the new for the characters. But yeah, they stuck. They just stuck with it, man. They stuck with it, man. And and I watched these first two episodes going in, and I'm like, oh man, you know Disney is getting their hands in on X Men, the animated series. I'm going to be honest with you, Jeff. I didn't have high hopes for this, dude. I was excited, oh, no. but oh, I went in there. Fire. It was going to be fire. No, I went in there because you know how Disney is, though, sometimes. Like, they get in their own way. You know, I mean, let's look, look what happened with Star Wars, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, the new trilogy that came out, pure garbage, dude. Mm -hmm. You know, and 
then the you know the MCU and all that the the movies that they've been releasing after Endgame were just not not up to par. Mm-hmm. So then you have some of the other series that they've released again. I didn't really care for all of them. They're not that great. Then I hear X Men, the animated series X Men '97. I'm like, please don't mess this one up, bro. This was fire, dude. This was pure fire, man. It was, it was good. It was amazing. It was outstanding. I love how they pick up right where it left off uh, to end the '90s show. Uh, you know, it was just fantastic. Um, the, the action was good. They finally, they finally gave uh, Cy- Cy- Cyclops his balls back, which I loved. Yeah. You know, they made him more like a leader, not necessarily this wimpy, crying guy that just so like emo. No, he's an actual leader this time. Uh, his fight scene in the opening uh, opening uh, series in the uh, I guess the executioner was really really good. Uh, you know, just overall it was just awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, you see what happens to Storm. You see uh, Magneto in a different light. Oh, by the way, the way his speech at the end of season, episode two was amazing. It was amazing. He was just saying that he's practically a god. And I was like, whoa, this is the Magneto I know. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, I don't really believe him, though, dude. You know, like he paints a good picture. But at the end of the day, you can't trust that dude, you know? No, oh, of course not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's Magneto. Of course, man. You know, he's got something up his sleeve. It wouldn't surprise me if he's the one that's been kind of pulling the strings for this, you know, Friends of Humanity, giving them the tech and all that kind of stuff to go up against the X-Men because he's wanting to create a, a war between the humans and and the mutants, you know, because this is what he mm-hmm. likes. This is what he wants. He wants chaos, you know, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised at the end. Is he's the villain pulling the strings all along, you know, and he's just played everyone for a fool. You know, he's like, all of a sudden, how can you go from being the villain to, oh, I'm a, I'm, I'm completely changed now. I'm like, no, bro, no mommies. Well, that, well, that happened in the comics. Ah, bro, I, I just don't believe it, man. That's all I'm going to say. I don't believe it. And I like that they're, like I said, that the writers aren't afraid to take risk, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that to me was the biggest, the biggest selling point, you know, like I liked where they were going. And then the first two episodes too, they left them, they left the second episode on a cliffhanger, you know? Mm hmm. And the very end, yeah. we're not going to spoil yeah. that because I don't want to ruin it for everybody, but they left it at yeah. a cliffhanger. So you're like, oh, man, just when it gets even better, they end it right there. So you got to come back next week and watch the new episode, you know? Right, right. But um, what, are you, what did you think about um, them making Cyclops more of a leader? Not this time being like this emo guy that's always crying and whining. I think that's good because that's what he was in the comic books, you know? He's more of the leader. He's the leader of the X-Men. And I like that they went ahead and went back to those roots, you know, mm-hmm. and that's getting everything back on track again, because even like, um, for example, you go and you look at the movies, you know, and they kind of make him that uh, like an emo guy, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like emotional and this and that. You just want to see him be a leader, dude. You want to see him throw down. You want to see him go at people, you know, and, and lead mm-hmm. the team and. I liked what they saw. The one thing that I didn't like, I didn't see enough Wolverine, dude, for me. But I, I, I know it's just two episodes in. I want to see more yeah, Wolverine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just two episodes in. Yeah. But, um, but my goodness, what a way to start, man. It was just wow. Just wow. I mean, every single episode was just phenomenal. Yeah. Did you tell everybody, don't bother me? I'm going to be locked in right now. <laughs> watching no, it, no. I, I wanted to see it so much that I watched it while I was working. So I played uh, my computer. Yeah. Yeah. You did the yeah. same thing I did because I over my desk now, I don't know, you haven't been here for a while, but I have like this huge TV right over mounted on the wall, right over my workstation. Cause I have a, a super long desk. It's like goes from one end of the of, of the wall to the other end of the wall. I have like dual mm-hmm. monitors on working there, doing work. I have mm-hmm. another workstation next to that. And I look up and I have the X-Men 97 going on. So as wow. I'm working, I'm pausing because I want to I want to hear what's going on, you know. So I'm taking calls or whatever, helping people. And then in between, I'm I'm popping in and checking out X-Men 97. But well done, man. I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of the story unfolds for this season. You know? What do you think is going to go? I don't know. That's the interesting part, man. You just have no idea where it's going to go, you know? Um, I know that they're reintroducing the Sentinels. You know, they've they've talked about Mm -hmm. Trask a little bit. Mm -hmm. Uh, 
they kind of showed him on screen for for a hot minute there. Yeah, quick minute, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, at the end of the day, I just think it's Magneto that's really probably brought everything back as far as the Sentinels, you know, getting them back up and running and giving some of the tech to the friends of humanity and whatnot. Cause again, dude, he, I think he's just the dude pulling the strings from behind, you know, you from behind so? the curtain. Yeah. Just so he can go ahead and get his war going, you know? But um, what, what, what did, what did you think about um, the fact that, you know, he may be the, well, he's taking over the leadership, but don't, don't you think that has to be blamed to Professor X for willing, like giving him in his will? Y'all believe, y'all believe Professor X actually did that? How do you know that Magneto's not just pulling the wool over everybody's eyes, you know? I think he did, man. You know? I don't know, I think, man. I mean, it was there. I mean, it was there. I don't know, dude. Like I said, I don't trust the dude, you know, at all. Hey, but I was going to tell you one of the things that came out yesterday, too, because we're kind of talking about a little bit of pop, a little bit of pop culture. The Alien Romulus uh, trailer mm, dropped. I mean, what do you uh, think about that one, man? You know, I was been disillusioned with the Alien franchise of late. Yeah. Uh, you know, has it really been spot on? This one looks like it's going back to its horror roots. Yes. I think it needed to be. So, so far, so good. I love how they gave more life to the to the crawlers. Yeah. In this that are just one dimension but you see him in swarms you see him attacking uh you know i think that was that was pretty cool uh what else i like i want to see i'm just seeing what kind of tech they're going to use you know how, like you got the the the, the mech suit in yeah. one episode the one, the one movie then you had obviously the uh which uh, by the way aliens with an s did everybody wrong they should have left in that deleted scene. Did you oh, ever see yeah, the one? Dude, I did, man. The, the defense of the of the fortress or something like that, where they put all the the guns on the on the perimeter, and that that scene was incredible. But yet they deleted it, Joe. Why did they do that, man? There's not why enough did, time, man. <laughs> why did they have to do that, though? I don't know, man. But you know, that's the thing with the Aliens franchise. Like you had Prometheus, and that was eh, okay, you know. And then they had the sequel to that, and that was kind of like. It was a letdown, you know? Yeah. And to me, the best movie in the series has always been Aliens. If you haven't seen that or you're not familiar with the Aliens franchise, go watch Alien and then watch Aliens. And you're going to be like, damn, this is this is awesome. You know, like, why didn't they continue doing that with the Marines and whatnot, fighting against yeah. these things? That, to me, is where it was at, you know? Um, but then they kind of got away from things. And then they they introduced new characters and you had to continuation story with ridley and then that turned to, that turned into a hot mess you know mm -hmm. um alien 3 was a letdown for me and, and ever since then i just yeah i just stopped watching dude it was just getting ridiculous but now hope hopefully now like you said with the romulus one they're gonna get start getting back into their roots here and getting into that sci-fi sci-fi horror you know mm -hmm. that's that's really where this uh franchise shines you know so i'm looking forward to that man um uh, what, 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 but why but why but what era are we going is this pre ripley after ripley? i think it's pre dude i think this is still um a prequel it's not a sequel you know mm. it'd be cool to but, see what happens like you said after you know yeah and, and you know and, it, and it, you st we still haven't gotten anything like from like uh I think they should have never gone away from the war, like the Marines versus the aliens. Yeah, I think exactly. They kept that going. That's yeah. where it got hot, you know, because you saw that finally a battle, some sort of war, you know. And can you imagine, you know, just a, a horde of them? You know, I always had this dream where they, like, the humans, make a pact with the predators, yeah, to team up <laughs> to go against the aliens. I think that would be a fire movie. Yeah, they come out of nowhere, right? You see the ship come out of the clouds, and it's all the predators. It'll be like, damn, that that's that's badass. Can you imagine that kind of movie? Like we finally get that kind of movie. Yeah, that that would be awesome, man. But they won't would do stuff it? like that. Would, would you go watch it? Oh, definitely, bro. You know, we, you know, we'd go watch it, Jeff. Hey, and speaking <laughs> of watching stuff, you know what's dropping this weekend? They got Ghostbusters, man. Frozen Empire coming out. You want? Yep. You're gonna go watch it, or you're gonna just be like, see what happens. I want to see what happens. I want to see what happens. Uh, Remember the last one, Jeff. <laughs> Yeah, I saw it with you, right? Yeah, and you remember we yeah, came yeah. out and we both had mixed emotions. We're like, y'all still can't do anything original. It's still bringing yeah, back. Recycled. The, yeah, recycled, man. I'm just like, I'm hoping this one's going to be a lot better. But, I mean, the last one had an opportunity to 
really do something different, and they decided not to. And then after that, I think next week you have Godzilla dropping. Godzilla and Kong, the new empire. You're mm-hmm. gonna watch that, or you're not a Godzilla fan? I, I think I'm gonna watch that. I think I'm gonna watch that one. Uh, I'm interested in seeing where they're gonna go with this one. Um, they 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 leaked another scene. I saw it, and you get to see like how a uh, Godzilla and uh and kong like how kong got him to come into his world so it was pretty pretty cool but i don't know i I just there's a part of me thinks that they're starting to get cheesy (laughs) it's pop they're popcorn movies let's be honest dude you're you're not watching them for the storyline you just want to see the the big bads go at it just looking for the fight scenes that kind of stuff you're not there for the story it's just pure entertainment you know so yeah i mean you're you're still looking for something a little bit better than where they started you know in the last movie it wasn't bad you know but you want to see a continuation of okay let's see if they're gonna give you something new and i think they will i think from what you've seen uh from the toy line coming out there's two bads in this movie so one of them hasn't really seen a lot of airtime as far as the trailers go so that's going to be interesting you know i mean i missed it who's the other baddie you look at the toy line, dude, because I don't want to ruin stuff for people that okay. haven't seen it. But there's a, a toy line. They have a, a character called Shimo. Uh, so check that out. And you'll you'll oh, kind I of see. Mm-hmm. You'll I see. I thought, it was, I thought it was just that baboon looking guy. No, the uh, orangutan kind of looking. Oh, orangutan. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, it's uh, check it out. You'll, you'll see. There's renderings and everything out there already. So you can check that out for yourself. It's not ruining anything for you per se because they're not really saying a whole lot. Interesting nonetheless because you still see flashes of that character in the final trailer. They're not really showing a lot of that character for good mm-hmm. reason because they wanted it to be a surprise. But it's still there, man. It, I'm interested to see. You know, I love monster movies, man. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. We are in the season of, again, watching some, some, some movies come out now because they're going to start teasing some great movies that are going to be coming up because we're getting closer and closer to the summer releases. You know, we're in March right now. So you got April, then in May things start to pick up and you have like, Mm -hmm. it seems like a movie release like every other week. Not all of them are good though. You know? So one thing I got to ask you though, before I I let you go here, have you seen Dune too? I have not seen it, man. I didn't know if you're a fan. I I have not seen it either. No, Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it though. Uh, It looks like, um, these these new ones are sticking close to the um, the, books. the books, yeah, yeah, which is what they should have always done, even the ones that we grew up with in the in the eighties. Yeah. I'll let you know what happens tomorrow, man, because I'm thinking that if I'm, you know, not doing a lot of stuff tomorrow, that I might want to go check that out. But I want to go check it out at the nice theater, not the Marbach nice one that that Jimenez gave shit for. Uh, but <laughs> maybe we could go watch it at uh, Flicks Brew House, man. I'll, I'll take you over there if you want to go. I'll, I'll I'll talk to you more about it. But it's really nice, dude. Swanky. They have like good food and drinks there. It's right up your alley, Jeff. Oh, for real? Yeah, man. You'd love the place, man. You could get you a nice little pour. You know, they got a, a good menu of uh, food selections and also drinks there, too. So, and you don't even have to get up, dude. It's like back in the day, remember at the Alamo Draft House? So they just come up to you. This mm-hmm. one actually has a little button that you can push and it notifies your server. So when you want something, they just come right out and they take your order again, you know? So, Good stuff. Man. Yeah, good, good sound system, good clean theater, nice screen. It's my go-to uh, theater here in San Antonio. So I'll definitely let you know, man. Maybe we could go check that out. You know? Yeah, definitely, definitely, man. All right, man. All right, Joe. Yeah, I gotta go. Gotta go back to work. All right, man. So make sure you go and follow Jeff on the X at Jeff G Spurs Zone. Talk to you later, brother. Thank you. Oh, bye. Bye. All right. So I told you guys this is going to be a quick episode because i'm gonna be going out for the day i gotta drive in front of me oh look at that mario kovas dune tune dude dune 2 is good almost three hours long god bless dude that's a long time man that's like uh watching oppenheimer again you know for three hours but if you're in the flicks brew house man that's i mean come on it's gonna go by pretty pretty quick man you can go order go ahead and order some drinks have a good time Sipping on stuff it's at the same time you're watching it. Yeah, man. Maybe me and Hefe will go and watch Dune 2, and De- Dune 2 tomorrow. Or go check out the Ghostbusters. Eh, we'll see what happens, man. Might go see Ghostbusters 2 at Flix tomorrow, too. Hey, man. Maybe we'll hit you up, Chris. You're going to be out there, man. 
So I'll let you guys know. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have for today's episode of the Alamo City Sportscast. Sorry we didn't talk more sports. I was kind of in a rush. Uh, Jimenez came in for about 15 minutes right out the gate. He was live from Las Vegas. Hopefully, he'll go ahead and do a quick show tomorrow, uh, and he'll do a walk and talk show live from Las Vegas. I'm going to give him the keys to the platform, and let's see if he could do a quick show with you all tomorrow uh, because I'm not going to be in the studio. So I will see you boys on Monday. I'm going to go out and enjoy my birthday weekend. So you all stay safe out there. And for those that know, I will see you all on Saturday, and we're going to party it up and have a great time. So until then, we'll see you boys later. Have a great weekend, man. We're out. Peace.